I reported here on the channel about what Ford was asking its dealers to do in order to sell future cars. I mean, basically, if you don't commit to this, you won't be able to sell Ford's cars in the future when they're electric only. You gotta invest either $1.2 million or $600,000. But if you only invest the 600,000, you won't get access to Ford's full inventory and you'll get a very limited amount of stock. Essentially, you have to invest 1.2 million to be a future Ford dealer. Those are the facts of the matter. However, Ford dealers are now taking Ford to court and they are now being backed by some powerful politicians who believe that Ford's actions are illegal. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. My name is Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. Hope you've had an amazing week. Here in Australia, the weather, well, here in Melbourne, the weather's finally warming up. We've had our wettest year for decades. Every every dam here is just full with water. There's so much water that, um, I don't know, we don't know what to do with it all. It's just flooded everywhere. And, you know, finally, it's sunny. But for Ford, things are not looking so sunny right now. That's for sure. A U.S. senator and Connecticut lawmakers call for changes to Ford's electric vehicle certification program, saying that it is illegal. Senator Richard Blumenthal said he planned to ask the FTC and state authorities to investigate Ford's certification program over potential violations of franchise laws. Now, I should point out that other brands are doing similar things, but not in the way Ford is doing it. They're requiring much smaller amounts of investment and they're also putting in 50%. So basically other brands are saying, you know what will help you to get there? Ford's saying, uh, if you're not a big dealer, maybe it's time to go. That's basically their way of doing it. Rather than culling dealerships and saying, we'll give you a buyout, Ford's saying, uh, yeah, if you're not committed fully, if you're not gonna invest a lot of money to sell our cars in the future, then um, this is our way of saying sayonara, bye-bye. Senator Richard Blumenthal earlier this week said he's planned to ask the Federal Trade Commission as well as state authorities to investigate Ford Motor Company's electric vehicle certification program over potential violations of franchise laws in what he labeled an egregious treatment of dealers. Now, it's interesting to hear the White House has been completely silent on this matter. I do think that's strange. Anyone have any opinions on that? Why have they said nothing? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Now, I made a video about this. Frankly, it's had hundreds of thousands of views because people do think maybe Ford is doing something here that's uh, not quite not quite legit. Maybe they are. I don't know. What are your thoughts? Blumenthal joined a bipartisan group of Connecticut state legislators in criticizing the plans during a virtual press conference that also included a top-ranking member of the Connecticut Automotive Retailers Association. The lawmakers called on Ford to again delay a December 2 deadline for dealers to opt into the program. So Ford's basically giving dealers a deadline saying, do it or, or else, commit now or um, you, won't be able to sell, you won't be selling our EVs as of 2025. I'm convinced there's a case that needs to be investigated here, Blumenthal said, saying the issue was of profound public interest. I just think Ford is making a terrible mistake here if it persists in this approach. Now, Ford are very much aware of the fact that dealers, uh, they have too many dealers for the future. They do, and that's true. I mean, realistically, you don't need to service an EV, an electric car, the same way you need to service gasoline-powered vehicles. There's so many parts to replace on a gasoline-powered vehicle. On an electric car, much simpler. Far fewer parts, far fewer services are needed. Therefore, do we really need, or does Ford, really need the enormous number of dealers that it has. Well, interestingly, Jim Farley has said, no, they do not. So he's made no bones about this, about disclosing the fact that he thinks Ford has too many dealers and that that is a cost to the company that they need to reduce. Ford in a statement said it would not extend the deadline. The voluntary program empowers our dealers on when and how to enroll, and we understand that some dealers are operating in markets with limited EV penetration, may choose not to enroll in this round, Ford spokesperson Marty Gunsberg said in an emailed statement. For these dealers, Ford is offering a second entry point in 2025 as Ford's EV production rates scale rapidly. We are confident we will have sufficient dealer enrollments for this round to serve our customers nationally. 
Additionally, Gunsberg said Ford does not believe the voluntary program violates Connecticut's franchise laws. I should point out, there's quite a few dealers in different states across America that are currently suing Ford. They believe that it does violate franchise dealer laws. I don't know. I haven't read the laws, so I'm not sure. The certification program rolled out to dealers in September requires them to invest around $1.2 million on charges, staff training, and new sales standards to overhaul the retail experience to be able to sell future EVs. And considering uh, that's all Ford will be selling as of like 2035, if they're still in business, then it means uh, that's the only way that they can actually continue to be a Ford dealer. Dealers can choose to spend only $600,000 US dollars, but then they only get to sell 26 vehicles a year. Uh, as in, <laughs> you can only sell about two cars a month if you invest 600,000. So that's not even an option. I don't know why Ford even mentioned that, it's pointless. Ford has noted that the investment figures could vary based on federal and state incentives. I don't know how that's actually true. They've never specified how that's the case. Retailers who elect not to invest would be limited to selling only gasoline powered models and hybrids. And while we all know Ford has what, like 300,000 pre-orders for its electric cars right now, they would have more than that if they hadn't have paused orders. In some cases, they've paused orders for the F-150 Lightning because there was too many. So clearly Ford has crazy amounts of demand for its electric cars. They're pre-sold for years and years and years. So it's basically like just free money for dealers. Connecticut State Republican Roland Lamar, a Democrat, said he was concerned about the price, which is more than what other brands have asked their networks to spend. In fact, it's a lot more. It's about triple on average what other car brands have asked their dealers to spend. He wants the company to rework major pieces of the program. They need to roll back this contract language and should not in any circumstances hold our dealers to a December 2 deadline. If they don't, I can assure them there will be repercussions at both the state and federal level. And I'm not sure about the federal level. Um, you know, obviously Ford and Joe Biden do have a close relationship, so I'm not sure that there will be any effect there. There could be at the state level though. Senator Heather Summers said she had deep and grave concerns about the program. Ford is attempting in no secret means to undermine Connecticut's franchise system. The amount of investment required for our local dealers is staggering. This would be a pretty big amount for some dealers. Some dealers, 1.2 million US dollars is not a big deal. Big dealers. Big dealers with lots of staff, they can afford this. The smaller dealers, the one that Ford, I think, the ones that Ford probably think, oh, we don't need them anymore, they're the ones that are going to really struggle with this. The automaker spoke with about 400 dealers over three months in crafting the program they claim with input from the Ford National Dealer Council as well as other dealer advisory boards. That's what they say. It is our view that although the blueprint that was announced in Las Vegas is far from perfect, it is a much better starting point than where many other automakers are going. Tim Hovick, chairman of the National Dealer Council, and Marty Duncan, chairman of the National Select Ford Dealer Council, co-wrote. But the program has been met with resistance among a number of state dealer associations who don't agree with these comments. The Connecticut Automotive Retailers Association has joined at least 13 other state groups in sending letters to Ford opposing the plan, according to Jeff Iosa, the association's legislative co-chair. He said the association is concerned that dealers who do not opt into the program would be prohibited from selling future EVs and therefore prohibited from selling cars, period, in the future. Dealers look at their sales and service agreements with the manufacturer as a partnership to represent all the brand's products as long as they're in good standing, he told Automotive News. To unilaterally change that agreement for a program is patently unfair. Now, let me know your thoughts in the comment section. Do you agree with what Ford's doing? Do you disagree? Personally, I think it's pretty clear what they're doing. I think it's, in fact, blatantly obvious. I think that Ford should maybe do what other brands are doing. Be fair and just, you know, if the dealer is a smaller one, say you'll help them out. Give them a payment plan. Give them some sort of ability to pay this because clearly the small dealers couldn't afford this kind of amount of money. There's some dealers that only sell a small number of cars. Those are the dealers where they're going to be hurt the most. They're the ones where it's kind of like the business that maybe a mum and dad have owned they could potentially lose their business through no fault of their own. That's the one thing I don't like about it. Thank you for watching. Have a great day.